Cleaned up on got some moves too. <laughs> so this is essentially the simple self-driving computer that runs in your Tesla cars, by the way. This is the it's literally the first time the robot has operated without a tether was on stage tonight. So the robot can actually do a lot more than we just showed you. We just didn't want it to fall on its face. Uh, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll show you some videos now of the robot doing a bunch of other things. Um, yeah, which are less risky. Um, yeah. We should close the screen, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to show a little bit more what we've done over the past few months with the bot. And just walking around and dancing on stage. Uh, just humble beginnings, but uh, you can see the autopilot neural networks running as is, just retrained for the bot uh, directly on that, on that new platform. That's yeah. my watering can. Yeah, when you, when you see a rendered view, that's, that's the robot, what's the, that's the world the robot sees. So it's, it's it very clearly identifying objects like this is the object it should pick up, picking it up. Um, yeah. We use the same process as we did for Autopilot to collect data and train neural networks that we then deploy on the robot. Uh, that's an example that illustrates the upper body a little bit more. Something that we'll like try to nail down in a few months, over the next few months, I would say, uh, to perfection. This, this is really an actual station in the Fremont factory as well that it's working at. Yep. So. And that's not the only thing we have to show today, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, that, 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 uh, what you saw was uh, what we call Bumble C. That's our uh, uh, sort of rough development robot uh, using semi-off-the-shelf actuators, um, but we actually uh, have gone a step further than that uh, already. The team's done an incredible job, um, and we actually have uh, an Optimus bot with uh, fully Tesla-designed and built actuators, um, battery pack, uh, control system, everything. Um, it, it, it wasn't quite ready to walk, uh, but it, I think it will walk in a few weeks. Um, but we wanted to show you the, the robot, uh, the, 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 something that's actually fairly close to what will go into production and, um, and show you all, all the things it can do. So let's bring it out. Do it. So here you're seeing uh, Optimus with uh, th th these the with, the with the degrees of freedom that we expect to have in Optimus production unit one, uh, which is the ability to move uh, all the fingers independently, uh, move the uh, th to have the, the thumb have uh, two degrees of freedom, 
Uh, so it has opposable thumbs, and uh, both left and right hand. So it's able to operate uh, tools and do useful things. Our goal is to make um, a, a useful humanoid robot as quickly as possible. And uh, we've also designed it using the same discipline that we use in designing the car, which is to say to, to design it for manufacturing uh, such that it's possible to make the robot at, in, in high volume uh, at low cost uh, with high reliability. So that, that's incredibly important. I mean, you've all seen very impressive humanoid uh, robot demonstrations, um, and that, that's great, but what are they missing? Um, they're missing a brain. They, they, don't, they don't have the, the intelligence to navigate the world uh, by themselves. And they're, they're also very expensive um, and made in low volume. Um, whereas uh, this, this is, Optimus is designed to be an extremely capable robot, but made in, in very high volume, probably ultimately millions of units, um, and it, it, it is expected to cost much less than a car. I'll just bring so, it directly to the right here. Uh, I would say probably less than $20,000 would be my guess. Okay. Think about what we're doing right now with the cars. Uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are like se semi-sentient robots on wheels. Um, and with uh, uh, the full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car, which we'll keep evolving, obviously, and uh, Dojo, uh, and all the uh, neural nets recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world, uh, it, it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Um, and we're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Um, and it's intended to um, uh, be friendly, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is, um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. So it's a, uh, it'll be a, you know, a light, a, a light, yeah, anyway, five miles an hour. You can, if you can get run past on that, it'll be fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's a, around, around uh, five foot eight, um, uh, has sort of a, a screen where the head is for useful information, um, but it's otherwise basically got the autopilot system in it, so it's uh, got cameras, got eight cameras, and um, yeah. Uh, the full self driving computer and making use of all of the same tools that we use in the car. So, um, I mean, things that I think that are really hard about uh, having a useful humanoid robot is can it navigate through the world without being expl explicitly trained? Uh, I mean, can, without explicit, like, uh, line by line instructions. Um, can you, can you talk to it and say, you know, please uh, pick up that bolt uh, and uh, attach it to the car with that wrench, and it should be able to do that. Um, it should be able to, you know, please, you know, please go to the store and get me the following groceries, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think we can do that. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. This, I think, will be quite, quite profound because if you say, like, what is the economy? It is, uh, at the foundation, it is labor. So what happens when there is, uh, you know, no shortage of, of labor? Um, this is why I think long term that there will need to be universal basic income. Um, yeah. But, but not right now because this robot doesn't work. Uh, so <laughs> we just need a minute. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but I think it's, it's essentially in the future, uh, physical work will be a choice. If you, if you want to do it, you can, but you won't need to do it. And, um, yeah, I think it obviously has profound implications for the economy because 
uh, given that the economy at, at its foundational level uh, is labor, I mean, capital is uh, capital equipment is just distilled labor, uh, then um, is there any actual limit to the economy? Uh, maybe not. Um, so, yeah. Join our team and help build this. All right, so I think we'll, we'll have everyone come back on the stage and you guys can ask questions if you'd like. Yeah.